Somebody shout glory! We celebrate your papa. We celebrate your mama. We love you. We honor you. And we are very, very excited. Ready to receive. Lift your hands above your head. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. With a big clap and a big shout. Let's receive our papa, Dr. Abel Damina. Glory. Glory. Whoa. Father, we rejoice that we have answers guaranteed. And we thank you that in you we have all things that pertain to life and godliness. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge is gifted us in this service. But in St. Yokes are destroyed. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. We decree that your people are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Are we excited to fellowship in the world this morning? Can we celebrate our fellowship with a shout? Glory! Amen! Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self this morning as we get into the word of His grace. I want to welcome those of you connected to the service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community, brothers and sisters online. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service this morning, guys. It's going to be an exciting study of God's word. We wanted to help us share the video, put them on as many groups as possible, like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, make sure you engage in the course of the service as it helps the algorithms of social media to give us the kind of visibility that we require to get this gospel around the world. Let me also use the opportunity to welcome all of the radio audience in Akwai Bomb State. We're so glad to have all of you connected to the service, guys. Get ready. We will study the word. Call a friend, a family member. Tell them life is flowing through the airwaves. We also want to welcome all our campuses, all the campuses around the world. Thank you, citizens all over the world. Together, we are learning and growing, and we will make a great difference in our world. Can I have a powerful amen? All right, we're still examining how to love God on his own terms. How to love God on his own terms. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18. <clears throat> Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we began to establish that um, Matthew wants us to see something here. The word, lo, I am. Lo, I am. When you say lo is the word hurawa in the Greek, it means look closely or look intently. Look closely or look intently, I am with you. Now, you know, I gave you the background that this study is not just Jesus speaking by inspiration. Jesus was teaching from the Old Testament. Because I have told you that every time you are reading the four gospels, you are reading the Old Testament. Every time you're reading the, old, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you are reading the Old Testament. We have established that the background of the four Gospels is Genesis to Malachi. And that the background of the prophets is the law or Exodus to Deuteronomy precisely. That is, the prophets were prophesying about the law and the Psalms. Now, the background of Exodus to Deuteronomy is the book of Genesis. Every time you read a book, you must know what that book is communicating or what it seeks to resolve in its day. Then we also, you know, took time to establish 
that the prophets of old were prophesying concerning a deliverance that was coming an exodus that was the prophecy that was the content of the prophecy of the old testament prophets a deliverance an exodus or a salvation plan that god started in exodus now why why was there an exodus at all because there was a promise given to abraham that god was going to take the children of israel to the promised land so the reason for the exodus was the fulfillment of that pro promise so when reading the Bible, you have to read everything together. You can't select what to read. You must read all of it together. So Jesus says in Matthew 28, 20, he says, Lo, I am with you always, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So Jesus here is teaching from the scriptures. The book of Luke chapter 24, 27 will tell us, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. In verse 44, Jesus said to them, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms, concerning me then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures so in matthew chapter 28 verse 20 when he now said i am lo i am there are two words in the greek ego imai ego emi two words ego is a personal pronoun then the word am imai is to exist so it is used for both past, present, and future. So when he says, I am with you always, he echoes the conversation that God himself had with Moses. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Exodus chapter 3, verse number 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. That's what I am with you always echoes in Matthew 28 verse 20. Moses was saying to God, what name do I call you? Like I explained to you the other day that the Near Eastern world or the Near Eastern culture where Moses was, they were idol worshippers. They were devoted to worshipping idols. You know, and the name El, El Elyon, El Gibor, El Shaddai and all the Els came from idol worship. Because it was in their culture. They gave idols different names depending on the events and the circumstances that were prevalent in those days. So when Moses says to God, what do I call you? He is saying to God, those guys don't understand what we are speaking. Because they are idol worshippers. They will not understand all of this grammar. I need to tell them an authority sent me. I need to tell them somebody sent me. So who do I tell them sent me? So God in his kindness answered and said to Moses, I am that I am. In other words, he is saying to Moses, I was in Genesis, the one who gave the promise to Abraham. I am here to fulfill it. And I will yet fulfill that promise in the future. So it's not just a blank statement, I am that I am. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I was. That was when I gave the promise. I am here now in Exodus to fulfill it. And I am taking you to the land. I am is the word Ava in the Hebrew. I gave the promise. I am doing it now and I will do it then. So he says, I am. I'm not one of them gods. I am the one who gave the promise. I am the one who spoke to Abraham. So therefore it means that that word I am is resting on an Exodus story. The word I am is resting on an Exodus story. If you don't understand the promise given to Abraham, the word I am cannot be clear to you. You must first of all understand that God gave a promise to Abraham. It is on that promise that God introduces himself 
as the I am that I am. Look at Exodus chapter 6 verse number 2. <clears throat> Exodus 6 verse 2. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Next verse. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. By my name Almighty I was known to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word Almighty there is the word Shaddai. It means to overpower. It means to overthrow. It means to overcome. Some also call God Shaddai as the double-breasted one. And some will call him the all-sufficient one, Shaddai. But it actually means to overcome and to overpower. So Shaddai is used against an intending enemy. Is used concerning a situation that comes to crush or a situation that comes to destroy. Please pay attention. So when he says, I am Shaddai or El Shaddai, by that, I was known to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What Matthew therefore is saying to us in Matthew 28, 20, in the account of Jesus, Lo, I am with you to the end of the world. He is saying that the promise that was made to Abraham has now been fulfilled in that Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20. Please pay attention. Now, we began to examine, you know, in the first service this morning, the words that Moses used for building blocks. Words like light. Let there be light. That word, let there be, is the word ava. I am light. I am light. In verse 11, he talked about seed. The earth yielding fruit whose seed is in itself. Then in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, he now says, The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. So Moses gives the building blocks for doctrine and we begin to build on it. Then God now looked at Abraham and said, In your seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed seed 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 in your seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed now in the book of genesis chapter 22 let's go there <clears throat> if you want to get the holistic picture you've got to get the message of the first service genesis 22 verse number eight <clears throat> and abraham said my son go back to verse six so that we can have pretext of this discourse <clears throat> hallelujah and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went, went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb. For a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Now you know. Um, on their journey to Moriah. They were going to Mount Moriah. Remember God called Abraham and told Abraham. Get thee out of your father's house. Out of your kindred. To a land I will show you. And I will make your name great. And I will make you a blessing. Now. This same Abraham in John chapter 8 verse 56. Let's see what Jesus said about this Abraham. John 8 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Next verse. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham 58? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Before Abraham was, I am. The word before is the word pro. Pro. Before Abraham, it go in my. So he now takes us to that Genesis 22 where we read. So God becomes what he wants. I am what I am. I will be what I will be. 
God becomes the supply. So whatever humanity's problem is, whatever we cannot do, God becomes a supply for it. When we say God is more than enough, many times you think of cars, you think of houses, you think of money, you think of jobs. You know, people can do that. People can give you cars, people can give you money, people can give you jobs. Even those who don't care about God, they have cars, they have money, they have houses. Some of them are so rich right now, they don't even know what to do with the money. But they don't care about God. They don't care about God. So when we are saying God will supply, that is not why God is called Shaddai. He is not called Shaddai because he will supply you cars and houses and money and all of that, which is what the materialistic gospel has communicated over the years and has done a lot of injustice to the church of God. When we say God will supply, we mean he will supply what only him can supply. What God supplies is what no man is able to supply. Shaddai. It is what no man can supply. Only God can save you from sin and from the devil. El Shaddai. It was, if it was material... Remember, before God said to Abraham, I am El Shaddai, Abraham was already rich. Abraham had so much wealth. I mean, when God told Abraham to get out of his father's house to a land, they will show him. Abraham moved out with 318 servants, trained in his house. A man that has over 300 skilled servants, minus the untrained ones. And you know that wherever you have trained people, the untrained ones are more in number. Imagine Abraham had over 1,000 to 2,000 people living with him. That's not a poor man. On their way, his servants and Lord's servants began to have problems. They began to quarrel and Abraham had to settle the quarrel. It shows you that Abraham was already rich. So when God was saying to Abraham, I am Shaddai, it was not a word connected to material stuff. The Shaddai in that context was beyond material stuff. How do you call a man from his father's house who is so wealthy and has a convoy and you think that man is poor? So when he talks about I will supply, he is talking about the seed that will bruise the head of the serpent. So when they go to Mount Moriah, take your son, your only son, God is talking about Abraham and the future. Your only son whom you love. Whom you love. So on the way to Mount Moriah, Isaac said to the father, I see the wood and the fire, but where is the animal? The boy is smart enough because the Bible tells us it took them three days to get to Mount Moriah. So Abraham now answers Isaac in verse 8 of Genesis 22 where we read, put it up again, Genesis 8, 22. Genesis 8, 22. And Abraham said... My son, God will provide himself. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Are you here? Please pay attention. Now I want us to explore that word provide. I am sure that the Hebrew were limited in expression. Because the word provide here is the word ra. R-A-A-H. It means to foresee. To provide means to foresee. To foresee. God foresees himself a lamb. The word provide. To foresee. Ra. God will foresee or God foresees himself the lamb. I foresee Abraham now, though God is that lamb. Why do they go through sacrifice? Again, listen carefully, pay attention. In their culture, sacrifices were used to honor deities in their culture. And God is not demanding a sacrifice because God is the almighty. He is the all-sufficient one. He doesn't need anything from anybody. 
Whatever he needs, he becomes that thing. He's the all-sufficient one, Shaddai. So why were they offering sacrifices? It was culture. So Abraham tells his son, God is seen as the lamb. If you go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 4, take note, chapter 1 verse 4, Genesis chapter 1 verse 9, Genesis chapter 1 verse 10, verse 12, verse 18, verse 21, and verse 31. It tells us that God saw, and God saw, and God saw, and God saw. The word saw, it means to foresee, to foresee. It means the light will shine out of darkness. It means the fruit, I mean the seed, will bring forth after its kind. God sees that. This is the solution. That is, God foresees for us that the solution to man's predicament will be a lamb. So in other words, what Abraham is telling his son is that the sacrifice is going to be God himself. God himself will be the sacrifice. <clears throat> God himself will be the sacrifice. He will bruise the head of the serpent. Then later on, Brother Paul wants to talk about God seeing in Galatians chapter 3 verse 8. Put it up for me. Galatians chapter 3 verse number 8. And the scripture foreseeing, foreseeing that God will justify the hidden through faith, preach before the gospel. Unto Abraham saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Glory to God. In thee shall all nations be blessed. So what we find on that mountain is a provision or we can call it providence. That's what we find on Mount Moriah. To see ahead of time what God will do. To see ahead of time what God will do. This is why the prophets were very strong when they said God did not demand a sacrifice. In fact, somebody like David will say to God, if it's a sacrifice you want, I will give you all the animals. But I know that you, the sacrifices of God are not animals, but a broken heart. So God never demanded a sacrifice. Why are we offering sacrifices then? You were offering sacrifices before God came to rescue you. God only came in and accommodated your sacrificial system till you saw his promise. He came in accommodated your sacrificial system until you saw his promise. So why did God get involved in their sacrifices? Because God is gracious like that. He will accommodate it even though he will hold on to his own promise. You know, love can accommodate. That accommodation is not endorsement. God loved them that way. You didn't hear that. Love can accommodate. But that accommodation is not endorsement. But God loves them that way. He allowed them to give him a name. How can you give God a name? <laughs> How can you give God a name? God doesn't need a name. Because there's nobody like him. The essence for names is to distinguish. See, if I say, you there, you there, come. You there. All of you will come. Huh? Huh? But if I say specifically, Pastor Prince, come. Pastor Prince will come because Prince distinguishes him. From you there. 
So you give names to people for the purpose of distinguishing. God has nobody in his class. He is God all by himself. So he doesn't have a name. He doesn't need a name. Because you're not distinguishing him from anybody. But in his graciousness, he gives them a name. But remember, the name he gives to them rests on a story. The story of an exodus from Egypt to Canaan. I am that I am, which means I will be what I will be for the purpose of salvation. If it's getting clear, can I have a good amen? So he allows them to give him a name. They have gods in Egypt. And those gods have names. So what do I say your name is? At some point they said in numbers. We cannot enter the land you are promising us. Let us send witnesses to confirm if what you said is true. And God said okay. He accommodated them. Send witnesses to confirm. If he is God and he says this is what will happen, he doesn't need to confirm. But in order for him to accommodate them, he allows them to send spies. He didn't start the sacrificial system, but he got involved because he loves them. Then they said, give us a king. God said, I am your king. They said, not your type. You are too spiritual. We want a regular king like other nations. We want a human king. We don't want your own. Samuel cried. And God said to Samuel, It is not you they have rejected. It is me they have rejected. Then God said, In spite of the fact that they have rejected me, please allow me to choose your king for you. So he appears to them. He said, I am the Lord. I will bring you unto myself to that land. They said, Moses, this spiritual king, we don't want. We want a physical temple. Because when they were in idolatry, they were building temples. When they were in idolatry, they gave names to idols. When they were in idolatry, they were giving sacrifices. So everything they were doing in idolatry, God accommodated and allowed them to bring it into his relationship with them until they can see his promise. If it's clear, can I have a powerful amen? amen? Now, God said, okay, since they want a temple, build a temple for them. But make sure it's according to the pattern that I showed unto you. So Moses building said, what can I use to represent the blood? So he told them, start bringing animals. Bring animals. Because in idol worship, they were used to bringing animals. Then God said, but I will dwell among you and walk among you. Again, God is gracious. So what Abraham took Isaac, it wasn't Isaac to be offered to God. But to demonstrate what Abraham foresaw. That he will be the seed. That he will be the son and he will be the sacrifice. That God will be the seed, he will be the son and he will be the sacrifice. So Isaac had a teaching service. Isaac had a teaching service. He is more than enough. El Shaddai. He is the all sufficient one. He is all we need. And he is all we will ever need. He doesn't give things. He gives himself. Whatever he wants to do is within him. So when God wants to do something, it comes out of him to you. If he wants to bless you, he becomes the blessing. If he wants to save you, he becomes the savior. If he wants to deliver you, he becomes the deliverer. If he wants to sanctify you, he becomes a sanctifier. Am I teaching good this morning? He becomes whatever you need and whatever we will ever need. 
So in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Put it up for me. Glory to God. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Elohim, Eloha. Then you have the word Ava. In other words, the one that will be what he will be is one. The one that will be what he will be is one. Yahweh our God is the same. So brother Paul will now explore that word in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6. Put it up for me. 1 Corinthians 8 6. But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things. And whom are all things and we are in him. And one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him. Now. Let not the concept of the Trinity confuse or amaze you. The Trinity explains to you the graciousness of God. He is all that we need as a father, as a son. He is called the firstborn from the dead. And he is the spirit. God becomes sufficient for us. He is the lamb. He is the light. He is the life. He is the union. God is our union. Our union with him and our separation from the devil. He is our kingdom of light. He is our separation from darkness. He is our brother. He is our friend. He also is our servant. He is our sacrifice. And he is the blood. Are you following? Yeah. He is our sacrifice. And he is the blood. We are his flesh. And we are his blood. Why is he everything? Why, he, why is he our separation from the devil? Why is he our kingdom of light? Why is he our separation from darkness? Why is he our brother, our friend, our servant, our sacrifice, our blood? Because he is the almighty. So brother Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Let me start from verse 1 to 6. Chapter 8 from verse 1 to 6. Put it up for me. Now as touching things offered unto idols. And you know that society... In, in Bible days was given to idolatry. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge perfect up, but charity edified. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Next verse. As touching therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world. And there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us, but to us, there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we are in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. That scripture we just read is Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. So Jesus steps out. He says, I am the way. I am the way. Look at Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 so that you are in the picture. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse number 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He is one Lord. Jesus steps out. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. You didn't hear that. Moses. Tell Pharaoh. I am that I am. And I will be what I will be. Jesus now steps out and says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. 
No man comes to the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Then John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the vine and my Father is the husbandman. John 6, 47. I am the bread of life. Jesus spoke in a way nobody ever did. I am the bread of life. So John came to that conclusion. He calls him the only begotten, the monogenes. Monogenes. In the Greek, when he is talking of the believer, he uses genua, genua, to be born of. But when it comes to Christ, in John 1.14 and John 1.18, he uses monogenes, unique, the unique one. To descend from uniquely. Showing you God came out in the sun. So he becomes the mono. The mono. Genua. To show you that anyone that comes before him. Whether it's Isaac or Abel. Abel never rose from the dead. He is killed. He is the birthright son. And Abel takes the servant position. Now those of you that were not in the first service will not understand why I'm talking about Abel now. So go get the material for the first service. You need to be in all services. You have to. If not, you'll be hearing 150. That's right. Because where do I even start Abel from? You need to get the material from that first service. Glory to God. So get it. Amen. Isaac is not the son. But Isaac foreshadows the son. He is not Joseph. But Joseph says, when God delivers you, carry my bones. He is not Moses. But Moses said, another prophet like unto me shall the Lord God give to your fathers him shall you hear and anybody that shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed so they're all talking in a direction then when jesus rose from the dead john said every promise was about him he is the monogenes the only begotten son he is the one who fulfills the promises made to abraham isaac and jacob and to the whole world at large so just like when david had a son by the name of Solomon. And he wanted Solomon to build a temple. And God reminded him in 2 Samuel 7. I will raise a seed after you. Now that word had to do with resurrection. A seed I will raise. Resurrection. Who will establish my kingdom forever. And that was not Solomon. David will get up in Psalm 2 verse 7. Put it up. I like this one. David will get up in Psalms chapter 2 verse 7 and he will say, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Next verse. Ask of me and I shall give thee the hidden for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. What is David talking about? Blessed to be a blessing unto all the families of the earth be blessed. What is that? Be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish the earth and have dominion. What is that? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What is that? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And look intently that promise that was made to Abraham that Moses established in the law has been fulfilled. I am with you because I am in you always. Did you follow that? Glory to God. Now, <clears throat> in other words, ask of me and I will give you the hidden and the uttermost part of the earth for your inheritance or possession. It's not talking about cars. It's not talking about moto. Neither is it talking about money. 
And that's where a lot of materialistic Pentecostal preachers miss it. They now say, ask God anything. He will give you for a hearing. No, no, no. No, no, no. No. Acts of me, the hidden. The hidden, not acts of me, cars. Acts of me, the hidden. And I will give them to you for an inheritance. And the uttermost part of the earth for your possession. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth and have dominion. In other words, the inheritance of Jesus is our inheritance today. What is, that? what is the inheritance? To save the world from sin. Not a car, not a house. So Jesus, in Matthew 27, 37 to 40, and we're going to read. 27, 37 to 40. And set up over his head this accusation written, Jesus... This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Then were there are two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the left hand. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. And saying, thou destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the son of God, come down from the cross. Come down from where? From the cross. If you say you are the son of God... Come down from the cross. Look at Matthew twenty two thirty seven. Matthew 22. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Next verse. This is the first and great commandment. Next verse. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Next verse. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. When you love God, who are you loving? What does it mean to love God? Huh? No. I taught this last Sunday. To believe the gospel. Faith in who? So, to love God is to love who? To love Jesus. If you don't love Jesus, you don't love God. Somebody says, I love God, but I don't believe in Jesus. How? Who is God? That means you don't know who God is. Because if you know to love God and you don't believe in Jesus, you're confused. Hear, O Israel, the Yahweh, our Elohim, is the same. He will be all he promised he will be. He will be the seed. He will be the son. He will be the light. He will be the servant. He will be the sacrifice. Hmm. Protos megas enton. The first and great commandment. Then he said the second is like unto the first one. On these two commandments. Lies Genesis to Malachi. You didn't hear that. On these two commandments lies Genesis to Malachi. Now if you follow that conversation, he now said, let me ask my own question. What do you think of Christ? Whose son is he? Some say David. He said, if he is his son, why does David in spirit call him Lord? In Psalm 110 verse 1. Because David cannot call his physical son his Yahweh or his Adonai. That means the promise to give the seed of David the kingdom is not to Solomon. 
is not to Solomon. It is that same seed that was communicated to Adam and Eve. Is that same seed that was communicated to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The same seed was communicated to Israel. And none of the world could meet up until Jesus came. So Jesus becomes the son. Who inherits all the promises and all the prophecies. If you're on the same page, shout glory. glory. Love the Lord your God, therefore means to believe. To believe the Lord over all your idols. To believe him over stories. Believe the Lord your God over myths. Believe the Lord your God over all your legends. To believe the Lord your God over yourself. Salvation is to trust in Jesus alone. Above your strength, above your works, above your own deeds. Trust in Jesus alone. Salvation means faith in Christ alone. That's the meaning of salvation. And we must therefore read scriptures in the light of itself. And not in the light of our thinking. You know, there is this idea of God's omnipotence, God's omniscience, and God's omnipresence, which in a way is great. But sometimes, what we think is in the light of our own world. He is omnipotent. He can kill. He is omnipotent. He can do everything. He is omnipotent. What God cannot do does not exist. He is omnipotent. We, we are thinking in our own world. But that's not what the scriptures teach. The scripture says, for example, he cannot lie. Scripture says he cannot destroy. Scripture says he has no delight in the death of the wicked. So, he is not omnipotent in that light. Where he can do anything. But he has all power to save. To save. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For the gospel is the power of God unto. The power is channeled. It's not God is all powerful. Uh -uh. The omnipotency of God is unto. Remember, I am what I am. I will be what I will be. Rest on a story of redemption. Outside salvation, God's power is not seen anywhere else. His power is to save. Okay, look at me everybody. Romans 1.16. Let's read like a mass choir. Because I really need to, 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 to put those, those things to, to a conclusive end. Romans 1.16. Can we all read together everybody want to go? Of the gospel of Christ for? Power of God. Power of God. What is unto? Huh? Huh? Two words. Or a channel. Or this is the path where this power can be seen. Once it is not salvation. Once your prayer is kill my neighbor. His power is lacking. God doesn't have power to kill. God's power is to save. So all these people that go around with what God cannot do does not exist. In their mind, they believe that God can kill your husband and give, you, give them your wife. 
And they believe that God can kill your wife and hand over the husband to that girl. So they are waiting. And they write prayer requests upon prayer requests upon prayer requests. Prayer requests written on a paper is not prayer. God doesn't read letters. God doesn't read letters. God doesn't read letters. If God were, were to be reading letters, there would be no need to pray. He would have said, and when you sit down, email me a letter. But he said, when you pray, say, not write. When you pray, say. He didn't say when you pray, write. God doesn't read letters. So when you are busy writing prayer requests to pastors and they heap the prayer requests on top of table and they are praying, God is not reading, not reading any of those prayer requests. So if the people praying those prayer requests really wants to do the writing, they are supposed to read each one one by one and pray directly on each one one by one. Not lump them on a table and be praying on top of the table. He said, praying always with all prayer and supplication for all saints. So even when we pray for saints, we pray saying. Not reading. There are a lot of unapostolic practices going down or going on in Christianity that are not scriptural. I'm teaching good. When you pray, say. The disciples of John came to Jesus himself and said, teach us to pray. Jesus said, when you stand praying, say. So if you are not saying, you are not praying. He didn't say when you stand praying, right. He said, say. If anybody could have written, it's Jesus that should have been writing. Or they should have been writing letters to Jesus. But there was no such practice. Is there anything wrong with writing letters? Nothing is wrong with writing pray letters. But that is not a prayer. <laughs> the power of God is to save. So when you say God can do everything, it is within the confines of salvation. Outside salvation, you won't find God. There is no darkness in him. He is absolute light. He is total light. There's no darkness in him at all. I'm teaching good. So, when we say God is omnipotent, it is in the light, within the confines of salvation. He has all power to save. He has all power to deliver. He has all power to love. He has all power to sacrifice. And he has all power to redeem. And that power is found in Jesus Christ. That power is found in Jesus Christ. When I say I love God, the proof of that love is when I love those whom God loves. When I love those whom God loves. When I love those whom God loves. Once again, remember. In the book of Genesis, Exodus, Moses is writing to the nation of Israel. So the background of Exodus is Genesis. 
and the background of Genesis is Exodus. He uses what they can identify with. The Lord himself will provide the lamb. Like I said a few minutes ago, in their world, God never instituted animal sacrifice. God never asked for it. God provides whatever he wants. That is everything that you need, God says, I will become. So Abraham knew perfectly that God will go to any land to save, including him becoming like us. Any land. So Moses reading that said to God, let me see your face. <laughs> and God says, I am that I am. I will be what I will be. So the message of the gospel, therefore, is rooted in God who became a man. The message of the gospel. He is not saving from afar. He is not even saving us from near. He is saving with and in and through us. That is his work. So when Moses says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 5. Please put it up for me. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. The promise has to be exactly what Jesus was. So in the four Gospels, we read the story of God in the four Gospels. The word love is the Hebrew word ahib. A-H-E-B. It means to esteem. To esteem. To esteem. Always use words in context. When we talk about loving God, we are not talking about romantic love. Loving God here has to do with the context of idols. Loving God. In the context of idols. For a nation that was open in idol worship. And totally engrossed in idol worship. When you say esteem me with all your heart, mind and soul. You are telling them believe me. Believe me. That is love the Lord your God. Who delivered you from Egypt. Love him with all your heart. Your mind and your soul. It also means believe him. I believe that God became a man. I believe God above all idols. An idol is a God you have created within the figment of your mind and imagination. It's an idol that exists only inside your mind. That's a God. When Jesus says, yes, no one can say no. When Jesus says yes, no one can say no. When Jesus says yes. That song, that song is an idol in your mind. That song paints the picture of a God that only exists inside your mind. That God can force his way through anything. Once he says yes, you are, not, you are not born to say no. He will force you. He will bend you. He will break through anything to make sure what he says happens. And you say you believe that Jesus was crucified? <laughs> when, they are, when they were crucifying Jesus, were they saying yes to God? They didn't crucify Jesus because they believe in him. They crucified because they hate him. So when we say God 
says something and God also did it. <laughs> you have to be careful. Go and tell the president. God will deal with him. The only way God will deal with the president is to get him saved. God's dealing with a man is to an end. What's the end? And if God wants to save a man, he will lavish him with goodness. God does not save a man by throwing trouble at that man. It's your goodness that leads men to repentance. So when God wants to save a man, what will God do to a man? He will pour goodness on that man's part. And that goodness will make that man to consider that there must be an invisible personality that is making my life like this. God will not use Satan's weapon to deliver you from Satan. You didn't hear that. Satan, God will not use Satan's instruments to deliver from Satan. Somebody says, I believe that Jesus was a great prophet. <laughs> he was a great teacher. He was very humble. But he is not God. You cannot be saved. You are not expected to create him. Then believe what you created. Did you hear that? You are not expected to create your own God inside your mind. Then believe that God you have created inside. You create the, 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 the image of a God who is a terrorist in your mind. He kills and make it alive. He's a destroyer. So now we are believing in what we have created in our mind, which becomes an idol. Jesus is the Christ. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Look at Deuteronomy 30 verse 5 as a round off. Are you blessed this morning? And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Then verse 11 of Deuteronomy 30. Verse 11. For this commandment which I commanded this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Twelve. Ooh. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Next verse. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Next verse. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Next verse. See, I have said before thee this day life and good, death and evil. Next verse. In that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments and that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Which means believe him. Believe that he is your savior. Say with me very loud everybody. I affirm him as God. I affirm him as savior. I affirm him as a man who came to save me. In the person of Jesus. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. Say not in your heart. In other words, don't doubt it. Say not who shall go. Someone has gone. Who shall come? Someone has done it. He was raised from the dead. I believe that unto righteousness. So how do I love God? When I love Jesus. I love Jesus. 
How do I love Jesus? When I believe in his sacrificial work. 1 John 3.24 Hallelujah. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abided in us by the spirit which he had given us. By the spirit which he had given us. So to love God means to believe in Jesus. Amen. How do I know I love God? I believe in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? Say I love God. Say it very loud. Say it very loud. Say I believe in Jesus. He died for me. He rose for my justification. I believe he lives in me today. I didn't hear a powerful amen. How do I love God? By believing. Not by singing I love you, Lord. No, no. It's not an emotion. You can save your emotion for other things. You love God by believing that Jesus died to save you from sin. Faith in Christ is love for God. Now remember, you shall love the Lord your God and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two, hang all of Genesis to revelation. Okay? So, as we proceed next Sunday also, we shall explore these two commandments. How many commandments? But how many are in Exodus? But how many did Jesus communicate? So, could it be that those ten were actually two? Could it be? That those ten commandments were actually two. And could it be that those two commandments are actually the things that brother Paul taught in the epistles? As the love walk? Could it also mean that those two commandments are the nine fruit of the spirit? Could it mean? No, I'm just asking. We're thinking. I have not answered anything. Could it mean that the two actually are actually one A and B? Could it mean that the two commandments are actually Glory to God. Don't you love brother Moses? Some of you didn't like Moses before. But I can see you are getting born again. You are beginning to like Moses now. Without Moses, there's no Bible. <laughs> amen. I said amen. Without Moses, there's no Bible. Let me close. Can I close this? Stand with me. John chapter 5. I close with this. While you're standing, we read it together. John chapter 5 verse 45. I hope I'm right. Amen. I hope I'm right. <laughs> you know that I'm right. <laughs> Let's read together everybody like a mask why I want to go. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you. Even Moses in whom you trust. Okay. Hold on. Seller that. Next verse. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. One, two, go. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. So it appears to me like Moses wrote two things. Huh? It appears to me like Moses wrote two things. Which one is the number one? Eh? Accusation. Which one is number two? He wrote of Christ. 
So it appears to me that when you read Moses' books, you will see two things. Number one, number two, Christ. I didn't say, I just say it appears. Are we not thinking? Glory to God. Had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. Glory to God. All of these are more. We'll find out next Sunday. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for light that shines in our hearts and minds. Revelation knowledge growing big. Light shining in our understanding. Your people are being built up, molded, equipped, empowered to declare the gospel and to declare their faith in a winsome manner. And I pray that this revelation keeps growing big in our hearts until nothing else matters. We give you praise for answered prayer in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Can we celebrate this word for a few minutes? This Glory, 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 glory. Somebody shout yes. Well, first of all, because I'm out of time and I want us to do as a counselor for a few minutes before we close this morning, I want to use the opportunity to thank all of you, both online, on television, all the campuses, and every one of you in the building for taking out the time last Monday to celebrate and honor me. And this morning, by the way, the district pastors and many of the different people in church represented all of you and gave me gifts that all of you sent to me. I want to use the opportunity to say thank you to everyone. Those who wrote, those who sent, those who reach out i love you and i thank you for honoring me like i said in the first service it it goes a long way to show that what we're teaching your understanding because the proof of understanding of the word of god is that you begin to walk in love your love walk i mean your honor you walk in honor you begin to honor bible says let him that is taught communicate with his teacher in all good things when you begin to walk in that it's a proof that you're understanding the message of the gospel so it gladdens my heart and I'm happy to have received from all of you and I want to thank you. Those who sent me gifts and those who sent me all kinds of things. I mean, I wanted to know I appreciate. Those who went on social media and made sure that everybody knew that I was born. <laughs> those who went on social media. I mean, social media was just bu buzzing that day. I want to thank all of you. And I want you to know that like you've honored me, you will also be honored. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Now, I want to quickly use the opportunity to also say today is our partnership service. So I want to pray for all partners. Those of you watching in campuses all over the world, today is that day we take our time to partner and to give towards this ministry once every month. If you are not yet a partner, you want to be one, send a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Partnership gives you an opportunity to send finances to this ministry once a month, deliberately kept aside. To help us accomplish the things we accomplish as a church. So I want to thank all of you. And I want to pray for all partners all over the world and in the campuses. That grace abound to us all of you partners. You are kept, you are preserved from wicked and unreasonable men. I also decree that you increase in knowledge. That all that you need is supplied. Wisdom, direction, preservation, protection. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your grace upon our partners. Together we continue to expand the influence of the gospel all over the nations of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Alright, so once again, thank you for giving and partnering with us. Finally, remember that we extended our givings towards our project, second phase of project, which our budget is about 235,000 US dollars. And we want to thank those of you that are already redeeming your commitment, but we still have a whole week to go. Those of you that have not heard about it, if you're just hearing for the first time, and you really want to give, you want to give $100, $50, $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, or even more, all you need to do is send a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. We will send you the bank details, and we'll email it to you so that you can commit and give to help us meet up with the projects. There are a number of things we want to do for the gospel, even as this year is wrapping up into the new year. And we want to thank all of you who are willing to give, those who are already giving, and those who will yet give. Our God supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Don't forget to send a mail. We're expecting to hear from you. Lift up your honor offering as we give and honor Jesus. 
I want to pray over all of the honor offerings this afternoon. Praise God. We give in honor of the word. We give in celebration of the realities that are ours in Christ Jesus. Lift up that offerings. Let's pray. Father, thank you for everybody giving in honor. Everybody giving in faith and everybody giving with joy to honor what Christ has done, to honor the work that Christ has made available to us, the sacrifice that he has given to us. Through our givings and our honor today, we believe that our offerings will go all over the earth, all over the nations, bringing clarity that our offerings will bring a sweet fragrance all over the world through the preaching of the gospel. And as we honor the word today, the blessing is upon everyone giving in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. You don't want to go away. We're going to have ask the counselor for a few minutes this afternoon before we let you go. So you want to stay with us on all the various platforms. But on t- on, 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 in a few minutes, Mr. Michael Bush comes up in two, three minutes from now. All the offerings on the pulpit, anywhere around the pulpit, you drop them, the protocol or ushers will help direct us to the pulpit. Hit the music. Let's do it as we worship Christ, the risen Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is good.
next offering, kingdom investments, and worship offering for the service. Hallelujah. Please get your kingdom investments and your worship offering for this service as we get ready to join Ask the Counselor. Take your offering and lift it up and give thanks. Lift it up and give thanks. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the opportunity. The Bible says we should not be weary in well-doing. And we have made up our minds. We will not be weary in well-doing. And so we continue to advance the course of the gospel through our giving and through our various services. Thank you for accepting our offerings this afternoon. And we thank you for the blessing in Jesus' name. Let the believers say amen. amen. All right, when you come out, the kingdom investment is the basket and the other offering right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. Hallelujah. Let's just get asked the counselor off the ground with our traditional opening announcements. Bank details, account name is Power City International, always remains so. UBA's bank number one on this edition of the program, 139-26-465-139-26-465. That's for UBA. Account name remains Power City International. It's the same account name for Zenith. 10, 12, 36, 59, 12, 10, 12, 36, 59, 12, 10, 12, 36, 59, 12, account name, Power City International. Okay, doesn't look like we have enough time on our hands to accommodate calls on this edition of the program, but just email, ask the counselor now at gmail.com for sponsorship, for partnership, and for support, just with a view to keeping a program on the air. 
across radio, TV, and um, online platforms, you can just avail yourself of the program hotline, which is plus two three four if you are calling from outside of Nigeria. Otherwise, simply 803 275 6104, or you email directly to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. That's the size of uh, the opening ceremonies for this edition of the program. My name is Michael Bush. I'm the anchor. I'm joined, of course, by my producer, my one and only producer, Pastor I.J. Quer, and the production team. And now, the man of the moment, the man for every moment, our father, our spiritual father, global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental Mr. Bush. Global Baba. So good to see you. So nice to see you again, global Baba. I tell you, it's a blessing. It's yeah, a global blessing. Baba will just get uh, asked the counselor of the ground with a traditional, ritualistic opening prayer. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the privilege of coming before you in prayer and receiving answers to prayer. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for Kwaibom. We continue to, to, to maintain our stance in the finished work of Christ and declare that the gospel thrives in this land, thrives in this nation, thrives all over Africa and the rest of the world. And we decree that through the preaching of the gospel, men in darkness are seeing great light. Thank you for disciples that are raised and ministers that are released into every man's world. We give you praise for the blessing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Global Baba. The Intercontinental. Our time starts now on Ask the Counselor with this one, Teresa Mukwala writing. Well, by, by the way, Global Baba, we let it off in Malawi the last time we were here live. So we just take that perhaps Teresa is writing from Malawi. But he writes, greetings, Global Baba. It makes a great deal of difference to go through your references that you give in the Greek lexicons, in your uh, explanations. Would be lovely to know which lexicons you use particularly and any other helpful material with ancient language infestations that I could use. Regards. Well, again, like I always say, Hebrew and Greek is somebody's language. So it's not just about the lexicon. You've got to be able to have a lot of training in how to utilize those materials. Otherwise, you end up getting confused. So my advice usually is to people who are excited about learning and growing is just be faithful with the way we teach, be faithful with what we teach you. When we say Greek words, Hebrew words, write them down, keep them somewhere, and then as you begin to grow, everything will begin to fall into place. However, there are two lexicons. There's the Greek lexicon, and there's the Greek, I mean the Hebrew lexicon. Those are the two lexicons. You look for them, they are online, you can buy them in the bookshops, but it's not enough to just buy a lexicon. You must know how to use it. People go to university to read Greek and Hebrew, Greek for four years, Hebrew for four years, and there are degrees for all of those. So again, there's a lot of learning and tutoring that is required. But to make it easy for you, just keep following, keep following, keep following. At the fullness of time, it will be easy for you to lay hand on a Greek lexicon and locate these words as we apply them in teaching. Let's move from Malawi next to Uganda, still on the east coast of the continent. Hello, Global Baba. Thank you for your word in labor, for your labor in word and doctrine. I'm Maurice. I watch life from Uganda. Global Baba, I have a question the coming of Jesus, which, which you said in one of your videos is going to be an appearance or a coming together. What do Acts 1, 9 to 12, Matthew 24, 30 to 31 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 to 16 mean, therefore, God bless you for me, Daddy. Greetings from Uganda. Well, Uganda, um, those scriptures you quoted, we don't have the time in as a counselor to read them. But if you have been a very careful follower of what we teach, it will have been easy for you to understand. However, if you order for my book, Heaven's Reality Now, Heaven, the Believer's Reality Now, all of that is taken care of with all those references well explained in the book, Heaven, the believer's reality now. You can order for it. It will help you. Okay, from the east coast of Africa to the southern coast and uh, southern Africa, this one says, it's writing from South Africa. Oh, southern Africa doesn't mean South Africa. I'm sure you understand that. Hello, Global Baba. My name is George. I write from the southern part of Africa. That, I should indicate that my questions may sound contradictory, but I just want you to know, and that I also want to hear from you. So you've liberated so many souls from ignorance and slavery, including me, by preaching the truth. 
I can attest that since I started following you, it hasn't been easy for me to enter any other church. Now, the questions or the problems I have that I would love you to help me with are this. Number one, do you intend to decentralize the mode of worship or global above conducting services in power city campuses all over the world? I ask because I have attended campuses and seen the challenges they have, such as power cuts while the service is going on. Two signal goes, uh, signals go off and on for some time, and you have to wait for its restoration. Its restoration. Uh, three, it's very difficult to translate everything you teach in life service for people who can't understand English, as well as children, especially in rural areas, while the service is going on. What happens there for Global Baba to those who don't understand English or who are not in the urban areas? especially people, for instance, in the villages where electricity is the no-no and where it is, uh, technology is almost impossible. Daddy, I love you for this gospel, and I would love my mother in the village to understand it the way I do. And uh, that would be by making it easy. I'm, I come from a background or a church of Nigerian origin where the pastor, Global Baba, would want the message to be uniform throughout all branches. To achieve that, we pastors were made to sit down every Saturday evening and watch the man of God while we took notes. On top of that, a copy of notes will be sent by email concerning the main points and scriptures for each resident pastor to strictly preach on Sunday morning. Can this also be introduced to campuses rather than connecting life for the sake of those that can't understand English because the coordinator will translate in the local language and communicate it effectively to members? He goes on Global Baba, but I'm just looking at the time. Well, let's try most of the campuses Global Baba have visited, wherever I go around, it's only the coordinator, the wife, and a few brethren who know and follow you only. I understand in Power City it's not about crowds of people, but when are people going to get this message, which is quite important, because most of them find it difficult to sit and watch you on TV live, especially those coming from a background of church services down um, Global Baba. We have a good message, but I feel we have an approach that is slowing it down to quickly be adapted. Most people really want to serve under you, but have opted to open churches and only follow you as their children. If only people can have a physical service than on TV, Power City International would be the leading crowd puller of genuine born-again Christians all over the world, instead of small families gathering in the name of like-minded brothers. I really need to hear from you, Daddy, your concerned son. Well, I think you, you are actually asking us to change Power City to something else. Because that's the vision. And if that vision doesn't go down well with you, you can start your own church and follow me as a son. It's as easy as that. But if you must be in Power City, it's a campus. I'm sure you know when you went there, you're going to a campus, meaning you're going to go and learn. You're going to go and study. We're not in a hurry to be a crowd-pulling church. In fact, that's not part of our vision, to be a crowd-pulling church. We just want to train people who are hungry to learn Christ, and they're willing to learn Christ according to the terms of our vision as a ministry. I hope that helps you. Moreover, you're talking about most campuses. I'm not sure you have attended up to five campuses. So maybe the one that is within your locality is just starting and you are supposed to go there and help to build it. But here are you standing aside and looking for a normal church. Power City is not a normal church. Power City is a school. And when you go to school, you don't tell the school how to train you. You submit yourself to be trained by the school the way the school have laid down the rules of training. And if that doesn't work for you, brother, you can start a fast-growing church in your city and you can learn, you can take what we teach and teach it there. But if it's Power City, it's a campus and I teach all over the world. The brethren and the coordinators know what to do. No, Baba. They're in the continent. Okay, let's just stay on in South Africa. Perhaps when we return, next edition we'll be able to continue there from. I'd also thank you for your time. Thank you for be, having been part of this edition of the program. My producer tells me we have under two minutes to say about bye My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor I.J. Quere, complete with the production team. Help us welcome our spiritual father, Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental Mr. Bush. But we want to pray for those who have needs, who have reached out. Father, we pray for those who are sick. We ask that they be healed right now. Amen. Those going through challenges, we ask for a divine intervention. Receive a miracle in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. Always an honor to bring clarity and to bring understanding and to help you come to a place where you are equipped to fulfill the mandate of Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'm looking forward to having all of you. Remember, every day, 12 noon GMT plus one. We are live on all platforms and in the evening, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. You don't want to miss the teaching of God's word through the course of this week. Enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. Amen.